Echo, uh, Oscar Uniform Echo. This is the uh, Yezu FR101S vintage shortwave receiver. 
primarily for the handbands, although it is possible to, uh, to put other heterodyne crystals in there to open up more bands. This one has all the hand bands installed. Let's go over the controls. Start upper left. This is the receiver AGC, fast, off, fast and slow. Slow is what you would use on single sideband. This uh, selector uh, allows you to use it with the uh, optional transmitter to make this as a transceiver station. So Yesu will still sold a transmitter for this. And there is uh, the option to put in four fixed frequency crystals, uh, which are not inserted right now. Uh, this is the mode selector. We have uh, lower sideband, upper sideband, AM, AM white, but that requires an extra crystal, and FM that requires the FM option. And of course, uh, RTTY, which changes the carrier point and CW, and CW narrow, which requires an extra crystal filter. This is the on-off switch, it runs on AC power as well as DC. I have it at AC right now. This is a standby switch to disable it, if you use it with a separate transmitter. Noise blanker, works actually quite effective. This was for the digital version, to turn off the 100 Hz display but that is not installed in this one. Calibrator, that works uh, as follows. You push that, then you go to a... Uh, for instance here, we're now at 14.300 uh, and that allows you to set the dial exactly at uh, zero beat. Um, this is the AF gain. This is the RF gain. There is a dial lock. Actually, when you push this, you can set the dial to zero in combination with the calibrator. It has an analog display, but it works quite accurate, actually. Okay, David, very good. With the Alpha 4 November this is the uh, Maritime two, Service Net at 14.3. Uh, uh, this is for the optional VHF uh, converters, which are not installed in this one. There is an uh, attenuator, 10 dB and 20 dB. This is the pre-selector. It's quite narrow. It allows you to uh, peak on the RF uh, frequency that you're tuned at. And it helps also handling large signal uh, 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 interference. This is the squelch that only works if you have the FM option installed. This is a monitor to listen to your own signal when you have the uh, transceiver, the transmitter also hooked up. Uh, this is a, uh, another adjuster that is needed when the transmitter is active to make sure that the two are transceive. It's not used if you use just the receiver. And here is the clarifier. If you turn it counterclockwise, it is uh, turned off. So pretty straightforward, this is the band switch, we have it at 20 meters now. Like I said, this one has all the ham frequency, the ham bands installed, 160 meters, 80, 40, 20, 15, 10A and 10B. Then C and D is 29, 29.0, sorry, 29.0 to 29.7 which is not installed in this one, so only the two 500 kilohertz segments 28.0 to 28.5 and 28.5 to 29.0 are installed in this one. If you change the bands, you see the, uh, the indicator there uh, move around, that's kind of nice. I have uh, the antenna tuned for 20 right now, but we can see if we pick something up from 40. We're at 40 now, so we'd have to go to the lower sideband. But there is nothing going on there during the day. So I wouldn't keep my hopes up. Absolutely nothing. No, 
let's go back to 20. Thought I heard something. Nothing during the day. Reach selector works very nice. It's actually a good, uh, good receiver. It's well built. After all these years, it still works very nice. Let's have a look at the inside. Okay. Here you see the inside. This is the IF section. You can see the single sideband filter there. This is the demodulator board. This is the. Uh, Side bent okay, crystal board. W, w, this it. is where the optional uh, FM board would go. These are where the optional uh, six meter and two meter modules would go. This is the calibrator board. This is the uh, RF section. Slug rag. There you see the crystals. And that shows you what actually is installed. So it's a very clean design, actually. Considering this from the 1970s, works quite well, it's very sensitive. Let's have a look at the back. Okay, here you see the re-array prone of the receiver. These are the optional inputs for 2 meter and 6 meter if you have those modules installed. Uh, this is the HF input, this is where your shortwave antenna would go. We got a ground, we got an auxiliary output, whatever that might be. This is a mute uh, output. You gotta put a shorter a shorting jumper here, otherwise the receiver won't do anything. That was there to make it work together with the uh, with the transmitter, so the transmitter was able to disable the receiver during transmit. Uh, tone that has to do with uh, hooking it up together with the transmitter. This is the speaker output. Uh, I'm using just a cheap uh, uh, computer speaker. The receiver does not have an internal speaker, so you hook, need to hook it up to uh, an external speaker. Uh, Anti-trip. That has to do with the uh, Fox when you use it together with the transmitter. This is the VFO input-output that allows, uh, again, uh, functioning together with the transmitter. Uh, so if you use it only for receive, uh, you wouldn't use any of this except the antenna, the mute needs to have a jumper, and you need a speaker. Of course we have uh, AC, this is uh, a simple Jones connector. And that allows you to hook up either AC or DC, so the uh, uh, receiver can also work on 13.8 volts DC. We got a fuse obviously, and here are the uh, ID plates. And this shows you the uh, serial number and the uh, year it was manufactured if you uh, know what that code means but uh, like I said it was uh, I think uh, early 70s, 72, 73 probably and uh, like I said it still works great okay that was it the Yezu FR11S shortwave ham receiver from the 1970s well working quite well thank you for watching this video